Bill Ritchie. I wish you could be here. I'm uh, unpacking a bunch of prints that I made the other day at the Pike Place Market where I was filling in for Ethan Lind, the busker etcher. And while he was gone, he didn't know it, but I was using a chine collet technique. And when I got back to our shop here in Seattle, I realized, well, I could do it over again and show this quick technique for um, using chine collet. Uh, in this case, I was not only printing the plate that I made of Ethan playing his banjo, but also his prints. This is an example of one that he did some time back. And, uh, oh, I don't remember, it had a smudge on the corner or something. So I took that smudge off and I cut out the image of his auto player and uh, did a chine collet to remount it in a sense and added a little bit of tone to the color in the background. So I'm going to show you in this video how I use the chine collet technique for this kind of thing. The dry wheat paste in this instance comes from Daniel Smith Ink Company in Seattle. You can order that by mail. You need a, a paper cup or some kind of little container and some cheese cloth. And I'm using a rubber band. Dip some of the powdered uh, dry wheat paste out of the bag. And I'm going to use about four layers of cheesecloth. You could use nylon stockings or other fine mesh fabric. And that gives you a shaker. A shaker you can just dust out a little bit of, of that powdered wheat paste evenly, as you'll see later in the video. Now I'll prepare the paper. I'm using Arches Cover today, and I'll soak this in water for, I don't know, a good hour is uh, ideal. The other papers I'll use are, I picked out of my paper palette some uh, Indian handmade paper. It's, uh, I don't know what the name is. I don't write down the names of paper, I just buy them. And I have some pieces of newsprint which will serve as damp paper to keep the sheet separated. After the paper soaked for an hour, I'll take it out and I'll blot it with the blotter paper. And then I'll put it in um, a bag, a plastic bag, and let it stand under a weight for some time. Inking a plate for chine collet is the same as any other intaglio process. Uh, using some black etching ink here, a little bit of plate oil in it, and I'll apply the ink to the plate, scrape it around with a piece of paper chip, and then roll it out nice and smooth. Clean off the edges a bit, and proceed with the wiping, starting out with tarlatan. Yeah, so if I'm talking... After I'm some tarlatan wiping, I'll go to some paper wiping with telephone book, it's my favorite type of paper, and finishing with a hand wipe. I'm going to start talking. So what are you looking at? Okay, I've got the plate inked and wiped. Now comes the fun part, applying the paper. I'll put the paper on the plate and then I'll trim it to size. This is the piece that will be sheen collated onto the white paper. Now the Indian paper is uh, sort of not really stuck, it's not printed, but the uh, it's kind of staying in place. It's still damp, remember? It came out of the damp book. And now I sprinkle on some of the adhesive. The paper is damp, and because the wheat uh, paste is soluble, it will turn into a glue when it goes through the press with all that damp paper. How much to put on is just a matter of judgment and experiment experience. 
I always put a piece of damp newsprint under the plate that I'm printing on. That keeps the keeps the uh, press bed clean, and it also prevents the plate from skidding. Make sure I know which edge goes up. That's the bottom. Okay. Now I'll turn the press around for the convenience of the video camera. Add the moment number. This is the year 14, the month 06, the day 08, and the time by the 24 hour clock is 1740. I'll compare this to the ones that I did earlier. This was with a, a light colored Asian paper. I think it was, uh, I don't remember the name of it, in the yellow background. I like it better. This Indian paper is too dark. Also, I didn't ink up the lettering because I wanted to see what it would look like without the lettering. But there's the process, fairly simple, and I uh, hope that you'll try it. Oh, it. oh, there's one more thing that I want to say. I started doing chincole a long time ago, and we always used arrowroot starch. This was the big thing. But later I realized that I could use yes paste when I was in a hurry because arrowroot starch had to be cooked. And then, and uh, about four or five years ago, I was given this book as a gift. It's called Chincole, a Printer's Handbook by Brian Shore. It's a beautiful book and based on the old world methods of uh, chincole. And very elaborately illustrated, and the techniques are well described. It's what they use in uh, at Crown Point Press. They use this method, and uh, I recommend it. It's a beautiful book for one thing, and also it's full of more information that I gave you in this short video. Thanks again. I'm Bill Ritchie.